Imagine you had everything you ever wanted. Everything. And imagine you were everything you ever wanted to be. Now, capture that feeling because that's the easiest way to manifest and that is how you're going to become her. This video is in partnership with Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and so much more. You'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. Right now, I'm listening to an audiobook called 101 Essays That Will Change the Way That You Think by Brianna West. And if you're focusing on shifting your mindset, becoming the best version of yourself, and leveling up mentally, physically, emotionally, and most importantly, Importantly, financially, this audiobook is perfect for you. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers, new releases, and the exclusive Words Plus Music series. All Audible members now also get access to a growing selection of titles included with membership that you can listen to all you want. The selections include audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts, and more get added every single month. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. That is while driving, traveling, working out, walking, or doing chores, it's totally up to you. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. Just visit audible.com slash Ashley Devana or text Ashley Devana to 500 500. And thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. This is the makeup that I was wearing when I got my hair done last time. And you said it didn't look like I had it. Had on makeup, makeup, no makeup. Mm -hmm. I would have thought that was concealer. I don't know nothing about makeup, clearly. <laughs> it's okay. This is a magic product. Like, this is the coverage. Period. Is that what the girls say? Mm-hmm. It has great coverage. So I just use it as my foundation. Day, I'm running out of the door. I'm going to go get a facial. I now go to Boho Med Spa. My esthetician's name is Holly, and I love Holly so much. I've been going to her for I'm not sure. I'll have to like run that beautiful bean footage so that you can see uh, the different times that I've gone to her to get facials. But recently, we had like a little tiny hiccup, uh, a conflicting. Uh, scheduling error my appointments that I'd set when I was like in the office um, the system had a glitch and we lost all of the appointments that I'd set so I had to like put them back on the schedule so with that being the case my my facial schedules got, got kind of like thrown off especially because I've been like traveling for work and things like that I'm getting back on my facial schedule and today I'm getting a Wico or Wico peel that has like the power of Accutane so it wipes out breakouts, blemishes, acne, hyperpigmentation. It's a 24 to 48 hour period where you, you know, can't wear makeup and you can't do, you know, anything crazy to your skin, but the results are long lasting and they're really really amazing and i'm also getting radio frequency micro needling so i'm really really excited we're going to jet out of the door and head to uh the med spa to go get our facial so yeah let's go
this is one of our favorite chemical peels. This is our Wyco peel. It has TCA, hydrogen peroxide, and kojic acid. And my three pound pressured massage is what's going to deliver this to her dermal layer for bioactivation. And it's going to help wipe out acne like Accutane. It's also going to help brighten up dermal pigmentation and make your skin really glowy. And last but not least, it's amazing for skin tightening, fine lines, and scars. So now I'm gonna let you pink, okay? to work on site together so we can go ahead and do like a little catching up while i'm getting ready i don't think this will come as a surprise but i am really happy at my job it's been a few months so i'm still really happy at my job which is a really good feeling what i do i feel is just very passion driven and um mission driven and I feel very supported, I feel heard, and I feel like I'm good at what I do. In addition to feeling like I'm good at what I do, I feel like I'm challenged at work, which is also a really good feeling. So I'm learning, I'm growing. Things have been going so well at work. I genuinely do not have like a complaint. I don't have a complaint about my schedule. I don't mind. Um, working on site. I don't mind traveling for work. I actually really like traveling for work and I like to work in like different spaces, coffee shops, restaurants, things like that. So yeah, <laughs> no complaints about like where I work during the different weeks i also don't have any complaints about you know my team the work that i'm doing literally nothing everyone that asks me about my job i'm always like i start like smiling and i'm like it's going really really well and i'm not lying which feels so good like i'm not grasping for straws trying to think of like a positive thing to say um i wouldn't consider myself the like office hot girl but i do like to look put together like i do like to go to the office like in my corporate cutie attire because you know i am a corporate cutie when i'm not going and like working on site i don't do a full face anymore when i first started i used to but honestly i've just been using this like patrick ta for the face i'm in the shade tan too and i put that on um put a little bit of like powder on because i've been running this into the ground y'all but if you look at it it's like this is the cream product this is the powder so i use the cream product um and then i use the powder and it just works 
it's really early and I do have like something else to say so I guess since I'm still getting ready I'll say it um, I had really like complicated feelings about getting this job I didn't want to come out and talk about those challenging feelings because I didn't want to sound like I was ungrateful um, because I'm really grateful for my job and I'm really happy to be there and once I admitted that getting my full-time job was out of necessity it made me just feel very complicated feelings towards my influencer journey I just felt very stagnant and very stuck I felt like my life didn't have depth and I felt like what I was doing as an influencer wasn't driven by passion towards the end of my like influencer journey it was driven by more so um desperation i just wanted to get to the get from one month to the next and just be able to like pay my bills and i just didn't feel like that was a healthy way to live i didn't feel like i could do that long term i kind of felt like i was staying in the influencer industry just for like the possibility that what was happening to my peers all the success that they were seeing i just thought that if i stayed in the influencer industry that would make it possible for me to accomplish those things as well to put a name to it just a little bit of like shame and embarrassment and a little bit like a failure because i was leaving the industry that people were like quitting their nine to five jobs to join. I'm very excited because I am actually starting my career, but I think that's what makes the feeling so complicated because for some of my peers being an influencer is their career. So while I do have safety and security, you know, for the first time, the feelings are just still really complicated because I have safety and security in my corporate job but all that time that I used to have I don't have that anymore bringing it all back I just knew that I couldn't remain an influencer because I needed to work on my mindset and I knew that I couldn't work on my mindset in the same environment and in the same I guess industry and of course people beg the question um, if you weren't you would you watch you and what I was doing before I got my my full-time job honestly no that's when I realized okay something's got to give because at this point I'm not even I'm not even making content for the good of my audience at that point i was making content just to stay afloat and that wasn't fair that wasn't fair to me um because i was like losing my creativity and it wasn't fair to to you just being honest so i feel a lot better now because i feel like i actually have depth in my life and um, I know that being in finance really means that I am like launching my professional career I just have to like frame my time as an influencer in a different way so that I don't feel like a failure um, spending the better part of my 20s as you know an influencer a content creator it was it was fun it was rewarding it taught me a lot and I grew a lot I just had to feel those complicated feelings for a little bit and there was grief and mourning that came with it because it was a huge shift for me personally and I'm better for it and I think I just, like I said earlier, I think I just had to admit that being an influencer was just not what I was destined to do long term, like as my career. And it's perfectly fine if that's other people's career, if my peers, you know, were able to make it work, but I wasn't able to make it work. 
because I wasn't able to provide the value that I needed to stay in this industry. I wasn't able to work on my mindset so that I could stay in this industry. And I just don't think that I was destined to have a full-time career in this industry. And I just had to, I just had to get to the point where I said, and that's okay. It didn't matter that there were women who look like me in the influencer industry, making six figures, seven figures, driving luxury cars, living in these huge townhomes, houses, mansions, none of that mattered. All that mattered was that I wasn't secure, I wasn't safe, and I wasn't meeting any of my goals. And all of that severely and negatively impacted my ability to be creative. And because I couldn't be creative, I couldn't shift my mindset and I couldn't get out of that position that I was in. As an influencer, I had to get out of the industry and do something else in order to like, not even get back to me. Because I think the whole objective, and mind you, this is all my Saturn return speaking. I think the whole objective was to like not be the person that I used to be. And if I wasn't gonna be the person that I used to be, if I was going to make an identity shift, that meant I had to do something else. I couldn't stay in the same place, do the same thing, hang out with the same people, and think that I was going to change for the better. It was tough, <laughs> but I'm clearly much happier. We're all done, ready to go to work. I got a sew-in and it's a side part sew-in. So I'm gonna add some really um, big body wave curls to it. Um, and then I'll show you what I'm wearing. Okay, so I'm running out the door. Let me show you my outfit. I feel like this is like the easiest way to show you. So I have this Zara bodysuit, these trousers from Shein and these um, sneakers from Boohoo. Hopefully you can see, um, but I have to run out of the door so that I, I get to work on that, so yeah. myself so I have this room for the next couple of hours then I'm gonna go grab lunch and then I reserve another room for myself um, that'll just take me through the, the end of the day so I have some things on my to-do list that I need to um, tackle I never know how to work these like TVs in the conference room so we have these like built-out conference rooms obviously that we have like a TV in here and the iPad that tells you how to join meetings. I don't have another meeting for uh, do, 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 another few hours. So I have some focus time. So I'm just gonna use this focus time to tackle some admin stuff, just get some stuff out of the way. I guess I'll just check in when it's time to grab some lunch because there's really nothing that's going on, but I am working. kids tip but i got a caramel macchiato with two extra pumps of caramel hot with 
whipped cream topped with extra caramel drizzle. Okay, done with lunch and now I am back in a different room and um, in another meeting. So we're just gonna finish up the rest of this work day. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> So I'm back home running the dishwasher and um, I'm about to go do a hot girl walk. So while I was at the office, I got like almost 3,000 steps in, but I want to get between 8 and 10,000 steps. So I put this gym outfit on and I got some new running shoes from Nike. I got the Nike React Infinity Run FK3 shoes. That's what they look like. That was bad shot okay this is what they look like they're super comfortable i sized um up a half size and they had an additional 20 percent off on them for black friday i think good morning we meet again we are getting ready for another day at work and yesterday I know we caught up and just talked about like how I was having complicated feelings about getting a nine to five but there's something else it clicked today that I was like oh there's something else that I want to talk about so I have been putting on a little bit of weight just a little bit and like going to the gym and doing 12 3 30 on the treadmill where it's like a 12 incline and you're going at the speed of three for 30 minutes that is brand spanking new but i signed up for class pass and um for the past hmm how long has it been three weeks four weeks not consecutively i've been taking um, class pass classes so i've been trying out pilates i did a pilates bar class that i love i did a pilates high intensity interval training class which i also loved um i have done hot yoga i've done cycling or spin which i really like too and um i'm thinking that's it back in high school and in college honestly i was like 115 118 i never really got to like 120 and then post grad after my breast augmentation i was like 120 ish i didn't really get past like i think like 125 126 i'm like 131 i think the heaviest i gotten up to was 134 when i say it's just a little bit of weight it really is just a little bit of weight however i'm very petite i'm five feet tall like five feet nothing so i'm not even like five one five feet tall i'm 411 five feet tall so i'm closer to 411 than i am to five feet it's why i live in heels because i'm literally so short and my height doesn't bother me it never has however when i put on weight even if it's just a little bit i'm so petite that i can feel it and i can see it and it makes me feel uncomfortable in my clothes but I'm doing 12, 3, 30, which, oh my gosh, is so challenging. Like yesterday was my first day doing 12, 3, 30. That was really, really, really challenging. Oh, I got some new products. They're from Juvia's Place. Um, I got quite a few products from Juvia's Place, actually. And I remember I did an anti-haul. If you know, you know, anti-hauls were like all the rage. All the beauty gurus were doing anti-hauls and I just jumped on the trend um, because I was just vehemently against supporting um, big brands at that time like Jeffree Star. I'm still against Jeffree Star. In my anti-haul I do remember mentioning that I wouldn't purchase 
from Juvia's Place. And at the time, I feel like it was because Juvia's Place was beefing, like the owner of Juvia's Place was beefing with like Alyssa Ashley and Jackie Ina and I think a couple other people I genuinely don't remember. A lot of brands were benefiting from YouTubers, you know, talking about their product and giving them glowing reviews and showing their audience just how well their products work. And Juvia's Place was one of those brands. And so once the owner was like beefing and it looks as though the owner was just like really unprofessional, I was like, oh, I'm not buying, I'm not supporting Juvia's Place. I'm not buying things from Juvia's Place. But Alyssa Ashley does fitness now and Jackie Ina is like focused on lifestyle now. And I'm not literally not even a beauty guru. <laughs> I was like, you know what? It looks like they're over it. I'm allowed to change my mind. Let me see what these Juvia's Place products are talking about. I got it on like a Black Friday sale. And yeah, you know, let's just see. Oh, she's taking it. People at my job don't really pay much attention to me. I go in, I do my work. I leave but when you look good you feel good and I feel really good so I'm gonna do my hair and then I'm gonna get dressed and I'll show you my outfit I've already done my hair it just looks the same as it did yesterday and I'm wearing the Zara blazer Zara bodysuit pan it down just a little bit and Abercrombie jeans and these heels which I think they're from Shein with my white tote bag so made it into the office i've actually been in a couple of meetings so that's been going well i reserved another room so this isn't the room that i was in yesterday it's a different room and it's a little bit more spacious and the chairs are higher up so i like that i can actually um rest my feet <laughs> on the little footrest thing at the bottom and um i don't have that much to do because I was very productive when I came into the office yesterday which is very exciting I like to do this thing um, where I have an airpod in and I listen to lo-fi music on Spotify that is how I tell my brain that we're working so it's called the lo-fi garden oh and last thing about my outfit I had on heels earlier but I changed to my Kate Spade um, sneakers just because the comfort. belt bag, leggings, my Nike shoes, and I'm about to go on a walk. to watch tiktok and on tiktok they talk about different eras so i don't think that i'm in my villain era but the tiktoks that i've seen about the villain era it resonates with me and what i have noticed that i've done this year in particular is i have stopped people pleasing i've gone no contact with former friends and even family members i had to create like permanent space and distance between myself and anyone who um expected demanded or required more of me than they were reciprocating and anyone that wanted me to abandon myself 
to show up for them, listen to them, support them, celebrate them while they were, you know, putting themselves first and constantly dropping the ball with me. But I actually learned that there is a little bit of manipulation when it comes to people pleasing and what you're trying to do is manipulate outcomes you're trying to manipulate people's perception of you you're trying to show that you're worthy and you're valuable so that people don't abandon you when you are constantly people pleasing friends and family and even in romantic relationships they can get used to you abandoning yourself for them and that just becomes their expectation of you and they can still put themselves first and choose themselves and they don't have to worry about like you getting mad because if you get mad at them for choosing themselves and putting themselves first they can just manipulate you back and say like oh well you dropped the ball here even if you dropped the ball because you just didn't have the capacity to show up for listen to support or celebrate somebody who was not showing up for listening to celebrating or supporting you i don't think that it's fair for friends to require expect demand you to show up for like the happiest moments of their life and leave you high and dry when you're going through tough times under the guise of well I just wanted to give you some space it just seemed like you didn't really want to talk if you're starting to get better then here comes the expectation for you to you know all over again be there for them but what about you you know what I'm saying I made it a point to not go into this next year with friends that expected me to self-soothe so that I could be in the best position and in the best shape to be there for them. I just don't think it's okay to let people who can't hold space in your life. Editing Ashley here and I just wanted to note that the people that I've gone no contact with actually hid their malicious intent until recently and once it became blatant I had no issue cutting them off but I saw a TikTok by a creator named Kendra Morris and she spoke about also revoking access to those who lack intention entirely because they don't think they're bad people and the people around them don't think they're bad either and they don't seem like they're causing harm but they're not loving intentional acts towards your well-being is what you deserve so anyone who isn't intentional in their relationship with you has actually done harm to you and they don't intend the best for you and for me that feels just as bad as those with malicious intent and i actually saw that a lot in my dating life so friends and family and romantic partners that gave me like that feeling had to go to. So I do think that this was supposed to happen the way that it happened and that I was supposed to let go of who I let go of. I don't think that it was beneficial for me and like going into this next chapter of my life I know that I want to build community and I also noticed for whatever reason I feel like I was kind of attracting like the we should hang out type of people and these are like new connections and I have no problem building new connections I saw this on TikTok as well it takes I think it's 34 hours to go from an acquaintance to a close friend. And for me, the one-off, we should hang out and then, you know, hanging out and then not really continuing to do so on a consistent basis. I just don't feel like that's community building. And I know that that's where I'm at in my life. I'm not in a, we should hang out every few months and then when we do hang out you ask me these interview-esque questions it's, if you're fortifying a bunch of new connections and they're not really going anywhere not really then it's like what's the point in getting together and having these conversations every few months personally i don't mind doing that with my friends my friends friends if there is any distance i know that it's not like beef but that's the thing that's the thing i know the difference between like people who are actually my friends and people 
who just liked being friends with me for like how I treated them and how I was there for them but the second that I wasn't it was an issue those people you know who they are because one awkward conversation will ruin the whole connection you pretty much know that you're gonna have to call it quick and that happens in relationships and friendships and even with family I went no contact with family members that I knew that if I had a conversation with them about their behavior and their treatment, they always want to act aloof. They always want to act like, oh, what are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. Um, because they're sadistic and they genuinely enjoy creating chaos. And um, they just enjoy being a menace. I'm just not going to allow anyone to torture me and y'all it is so cold outside today it's 36 degrees right now that is so freaking cold this base y'all my freaking base makeup you can't tell me a thing how gorge i feel like we i feel like we say this every morning do we not now it's time to really quickly clean all this up and then go do my hair and then i'm gonna put my outfit on y'all my outfit today is so this is what I'm wearing. So I have an Aritzia bodysuit on, Aritzia trousers, and just some black heels. I'm trying to make it so that you can see my whole outfit. So hold on. Okay. This is what it's giving. What do you think? I think I really like this outfit. I think this has to be my favorite look of the week. It's so cute. Okay, that's the outfit. Um, I think I'm gonna put on some gloves. So I have to put on some lotion real quick and then we can run out the door. You are in the meeting now. minutes so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up and we can blow this popsicle stand it was a good day it was a productive day but it was a light it's a light day so since i'm gonna be driving i'm gonna put some spf on my hands uh, since my hands will be holding the steering wheel i'm gonna protect my hands from the uv SPF 50. This is just travel size copper tone. You can get this from literally any store. I'm just gonna put my laptop up and then we can head out. Okay, so I'm home and I need to make my bed up. So that's what's going on in the back before I flip the camera over. However, my outfit was outfitting today, okay? I feel like I just look so cute. Also needs a vacuum floor. I'll get to it. I got one compliment today and it was on my hair, which I appreciate. I just look so stinking adorable. And I look like such a corporate cutie. Hello. I got home and I was like, I'm not taking this outfit off. I'm take, I'm not taking my shoes off. I'm I'm going to vlog in it a little bit more. But now I'm taking my shoes off and I'm taking my outfit off because it's time to eat dinner. I'm not tired from work, but I am just needing to decompress. I just need to like just chill for a little bit. 